Would you please stand? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, before we have our territorial acknowledgement, um, today is Orthodox Easter Day. And I'd just like us to spend uh, a moment in quiet together praying for peace uh, in Ukraine um, and praying for the Orthodox Church, which has been so divided now between those who support the Russian Orthodox Church and those who support the Ukrainian Orthodox Church and the people of both of those churches uh, who are each in um, difficult positions. Let us pray in silence together for peace and for those who are celebrating Easter today. And as we pray for peace, we need to recognize the peace that we in Canada and in the Anglican Church of Canada are still working towards. We begin by acknowledging the traditional territory upon which we stand. For many thousands of years, the Sinaiaks and other peoples have sought to walk gently on this land. They offered assistance to the first European travellers to this territory and shared their knowledge for survival in what was at times a harsh climate. We seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based in honour and deep respect. We sing now The Green Blade Rises, number 237 in the Blue Book.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. And pray together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing our Gloria. Glory to God on high number 365 in the blue books. so that we may seek the good of others and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace. To the praise of God, the source of all life. Amen. Would you be seated for our first reading? Acts 5, verses 27 to 32. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he may give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Before we hear our gospel reading, we're going to sing that song we were practicing earlier on. There is a Redeemer. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, We have seen the Lord! But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the marks of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand, put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be guided by God, Abba Father, Jesus Saviour, and the Sacred Spirit. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Excellent. Good, you're still with me. Today is the day for a different kind of reflection on Easter. One with a, a broader focus and one which is encompasses something that I've been thinking about for a long time. And it brings together the start of our Holy Week services and today's reading from Acts. And it starts with a phrase that we know well from the Palm Sunday service. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Son of David is Jesus. And what the crowd was saying as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on um, what we now think of as Palm Sunday uh, was that Jesus was a descendant of David. Not necessarily a literal descendant, although uh, the beginning of two of our Gospels makes it clear that that's what Jesus was, but a, a moral descendant of Jesus, a spiritual descendant of Jesus, that Dave, uh, of David, sorry, um, that Jesus was like David in some very significant way. And that raises a question. What side of David was Jesus like? Because there were at least two very different sides to King David's character. I guess what the crowd might have been crying out for was a leader who was going to release them from the reign of the Romans in the same way that King David released the Israelites from the Philistines. 
They wanted a, a war leader, a political leader, um, which Jesus was very clear that he was not going to be. And they would conveniently forget that King David, as he amassed more and more power, became more and more corrupt, more and more venal. That King David was willing to seduce or maybe rape the wife of his best general. Then he had the general killed so that David could marry her and avoid the shame of the resulting pregnancy. This was the David whose hands were so guilty of bloodshed that God would not allow him to build a temple in Jerusalem. But there was another David, a younger, more innocent David. Next slide, please. David, the giant killer, the one who used a small stone to fell the well-armed Philistine champion, Goliath. This David was a harpist who could soothe away evil spirits, much like our musicians here. <laughs> this David was the poet who wrote many of the Psalms. This David was so passionate about God that he danced naked in front of the Ark of the Covenant. Would the crowd have been welcoming that David into Jerusalem? It would have been prescient of them to do so, because that's how Jesus came to Jerusalem. He came powerless and passionate, determined to serve God no matter what it cost, to give his life in an attempt to save the world from corrupt legalistic religion, the religion of the people that put uh, him to death and so often the way that religion goes. Jesus stood before the priestly council and was condemned for speaking out against them. In our reading today, the apostles stood before that same council and were condemned for speaking their truth. I increasingly see God as on the side of the small against the large. Of, again, of individuals against institutions, on the side of the powerless against the powerful. As we've already recognised in this service, Easter has taken place in the background of, with, with, with the background of the war in Ukraine, in which we have seen a small David of a country stand up against the Goliath of the Russian army. Next slide. Armed with handheld weapons, they have defeated tanks and helicopters. It has not been without cost, as we have seen in Mariupol and countless other cities and towns. And of course, it would be naive of us to think that Ukraine, on their side, have been innocent of corruption and atrocities. But we have been sure of our support for them because they have been facing the vicious aggression of the Putin regime. David and Goliath is a story we all want to be a part of. The story of the plucky underdog beating the odds to fell the overconfident bully. Jesus, as the son of David, takes on the religious institution which had lost sight of its founder. As scripture says, he came to that which was his own, 
and his own did not welcome him. It is deeply ironic that the greatest being becomes a small human who sets himself against a powerful institution. So Jesus stands alongside the survivors of residential schools and victims of clerical sexual abuse. Jesus is always challenging the institution which bears his name to remember who he is and who he values. We continually have to ask ourselves who is more important in practice in our church, the outsider or the insider, the marginalized or the core member. And those are always uncomfortable questions for us because we are still an institution and our inclination is defending the status quo, protecting ourselves against threats, maintaining our position in the world and in society. This week, we heard of a senior Anglican leader who has been caught up in sexual misconduct. Those of us who knew him were shocked as he seemed the last person who would do that kind of a thing. And his story came on the heels of other revelations of sexual misconduct and cover-up within the Anglican Church. There is so much more than I can or should say about that in this short sermon. But I should also say that if you are affected in any way by this, please, please find someone who you can trust that you can talk to. Secrets need to come out. We need to address the dark side within us and within our institution. As the son of David welcomed into Jerusalem, Jesus stands with victims. Jesus stands with the abused. Jesus stands with the marginalized. And if Jesus stands there, we must too. Amen. Would you stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, <coughs> Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Seated uh, or remain standing as you prefer for our prayers. Let us pray together to the Lord. And say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Loving God, we thank you for your many gifts to us. The love which brings us together. The earth which provides for our needs. And for the new life you have given us in Jesus. We pray to you for our Christian family. 
We've been reminded of um, some notable examples in Neil's sermon. We pray to you for those, all those who love you, whatever they happen to call themselves. We ask you for the grace to grow in your love and your mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have have mercy. mercy. We pray to you for our world, all its cares and needs, disasters that are caused by nature and disasters that are caused by humans. We pray to you for the leaders who lead us and care for us, who make difficult decisions. Please add your prayers for our world. Pray for those conflicts which have disappeared off our TV screens in Somalia, in Yemen, Mm -hmm. in Congo, in Nigeria. We pray for people once again oppressed in Myanmar. Hmm. We pray for peace for Ukraine. Mm Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray to you for those who are in need, those who are sick and lonely, hurt and frightened, those among us who are living without hope. We pray for our Orthodox brothers and sisters who are celebrating Easter. We pray for the, I'm sorry, Carbeck family. Thank you. The Pascoe family, for Pat McCabe, for every one of those that are listed in our bulletin this week. Please add your own prayers for those who are on your heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those that we love who have died and for their families, that you will surround them with your care and your love. The families of Harvey Pittman and Joe Wilde, whose funerals were last week. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And Lord, we pray for one another. We ask you to bless us who have already been richly blessed. Our friends and our relatives. Bless the places where we work, where we live, where we gather together. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Would you stand for our confession? My brothers and sisters, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes us to this table. Let us confess our failure to love, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. 
We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sing our peace song. Put peace into each other's hands and like a treasure hold it. Protect it like a candle flame with tenderness and Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Now, as we prepare to join in communion together, we're going to sing the trumpet sound, the angels sing. The feast is ready to begin. Yeah. 